Crone, tell me your flat earth story. Um, I mean, before I even get into flat earth, I think uh, it's important to start at why I started thinking. Because in my life, you know, I was a little kid, you know, I have to train jujitsu and I have this image and I have this family and all these things I got to do. So I chose to fight. I chose to do jiu-jitsu. And as an athlete and as an artist and as a martial artist, there's only one truth. You know, it either works or it doesn't work. So I train jiu-jitsu. And when something doesn't work, you know, you have to be honest with yourself to know that it doesn't work. And then to be like, okay, let me find something that does work. And let me find the truth. Because only the truth is going to solve my problems. Um, Lying to myself and, and telling myself things that, are not true just to make myself feel good about something is only going to, it's going to build up later. So I have like a, my personality has always been like to, to find the truth with jujitsu, find the truth, what really works, what really is, is true. And then I think just naturally that kind of just trickled away into my whole life. And I always kind of try to see through the bullshit and see through the, through the games. But I was never really into conspiracy theories and like into that kind of stuff or into being like protecting the animals or all this stuff. You know, as a kid, I was like, fuck all that shit. It's all bullshit. I just got to do jujitsu. I just got to fight. I just got to put my energy into this. And then as I started to fight more MMA, where I kind of stopped teaching so much at the gym and started putting less time into teaching and I was focusing more on training and more on fighting and more on like traveling to go see Nick and Nate. Six hours. Then you go to uh, uh, San Francisco, an hour and a half. So I spent a lot of time on my own, a lot of time driving, a lot of time to think. And I started to like, I don't know. I think the first thing that got me with the, that got me questioning stuff. First, my friend Murph, he told me about the chemtrails like years and years ago. And I was like, this is some bullshit. Are you kidding me? They're throwing fucking shit in the sky. I was like, no. And then he kind of broke it down and everything. And I was like, oh, shit, this shit might be real. And then the one that really did it for me was when I found out they put fluoride in the water. And then I was like, I can't believe they would do that, that they would put fluoride in the water and, like, purposely try to, like, calcify your pineal gland. So once I realized that it was on purpose, that it wasn't an accident, Then I started to ask questions about everything. I went through this fucking wormhole of all this shit. And you you get depressed to learn about how fucked up the world is and and learning about all this shit. But I'm at a point now where I'm I'm at ease with it because the only thing I can do is is try to make it better. It's already fucked up. But it's it's like a good fucked up. It's It's like an interesting game we play because the world's so fucked up. And it's like now we have our own roles. Who's gonna try to save the world? Who's gonna try to destroy the world? Who's gonna not do shit? Right. Who's just going to be there? So I've chosen to fight for something that I think is bigger than the Gracie family, bigger than MMA. I, I'm trying to fight for the truth for the for the next generation. So my nephew and my the next generation has something to live. So after a lot of fucking conspiracies and shit and time, I got to the flat earth and I was like, this is some bullshit. And then looking into it more, I believed in it for a while. I was like, oh, fuck, this might be true. And then I was like, nah, fuck that. That's not bullshit. I can't believe in this. And then I got back to it, and I started reaching. I actually seen a lot of your stuff, Eric. I, I've been watching a lot of your videos for a long time. I'm a big fan. But um, after a while and while and while, I, uh, I realized it was true. And from what, I, from what I've collected in the universe, from what I've seen, I think there's more things proving me that the Earth is flat than that it's spinning at a million miles per hour, or actually 666 miles per hour, which is fucking interesting. And uh, and that we don't, like, it always was, like, crazy. Like, man, you're telling me that we're spinning, and then that we're spinning around the sun, and the sun is shooting down this fucking shit, and we're just sitting here chilling on this podcast, like, no big deal. It's like, doop, doop, doop. Like, that's always been crazy to me. So I never, uh, it was, like, just a baffling thing to, to try to grasp. And then, so now I'm like, I I understand, I have like things that I really believe that the earth is flat, more so than the earth is round. And uh, so I'm like that, I'm at that stage where I don't want to be the one to like 
be like, oh, you guys have to fucking believe the earth is flat. Nah, nah, because that doesn't do anything either. I think that we all just need to understand that the more we spark the truth, it takes time, you know, to get to somewhere where me, the things that I know, it takes time. It doesn't mean that it won't happen. It just takes time. So it's like, first, you got to get into the moon landing. If you don't believe in that, then you got to research that. Would this be better if you were Crone Anderson? It is what it is, you know, and I am who I am because I am who I am throughout my life. But I'm done believing that I'm Crone Gracie and I'm this character and I have to I have to fit into this character every day, 24-7 to live my life. You know, I believe that I... I play this character. I'm born into this character, but I'm a higher consciousness. I'm part of something much greater. I just chose to live this life in this way. So the pressure was like my whole life. When it's a little kid listening to my dad and the manipulation and the pressure, I got tricked into becoming a martial artist and fighting. It was like my brother passed away right at the time. And right before he passed away, he's like, go do jujitsu, do jujitsu. And like pushing me and then... He passed away, so I'm like, fuck, I have the pressure now, not only on my brother, but on my father. I'm the only son. So I just went full force, manipulated, and I just went heads in. And I liked it, and I did it, and I enjoyed it, and it was like what it was. But and then I got to a point where I realized I was killing myself trying to live up to my father's expectations and up to my brother's expectations, which don't matter. What matters is what, how I feel, how I feel. I know my brother loves me. I know my dad loves me. And if they don't because I do or don't win, then fuck them. It doesn't matter. But I know that doesn't matter because they love me no matter what. You know, my dad brother, he's looking down on me no matter what I'm doing is good. My dad, the same way. But I think that now, after competing my whole life, I get to a point with, with, with fighting that I'm like, I have no pressure, actually. Right now, I have the least pressure I ever had. That's why I feel like I don't have to fight. Because even though I, whatever happens may happen, but I don't feel like I have this pressure to represent because I'm already representing. I represent it since the day I was born. I represent more than many in my generation. And now I'm like, man, I, if I'm going to do this fighting thing, I got to do it because I like to do it, because I enjoy it, because I feel something in my heart. I like training. I like getting to myself like to these limits. I like doing all these things that are around. I like the people that are around. I like training with Nick Diaz, with Nate Diaz. I like traveling. I like having free time. So I like everything around fighting, but I don't like the actual fact of going into a ring and fighting for my life, period. I will. I will do that because I, I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of myself. I'm not afraid of my opponent. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm not afraid of... I'm not afraid. I, I go with my life. I go with what I need, but it's not the pressure... I've already passed that. Right now, I feel no pressure. That's why I feel like I don't have to do it, and I don't feel like I owe shit to nobody. So because I'm so free, I have a chance to see, like, what the, what the fuck does it make me feel good? What makes me feel good in my life? And coming on this podcast and telling people the way I feel about something that everybody's ridiculed and everybody's just, just so ignorant about makes me feel happy. Like, I fucking already feel happy right now. I'm like, man, this is something great. Because if I die tomorrow, jiu-jitsu is great and everything, and my fighting is great or whatever, but we are all on the same plane, plane here, and we all need to work together to, to evolve ourselves consciously and to evolve ourselves in a living space and understand, like, yeah, I want to be a good person, but being a good person and doing bad things don't make sense. But being a good person in every, every action, every attitude you're looking to be a better person. You're looking to follow your intuition. You're looking to feel what feels right. I think that's what I'm about. So right now, I'm just living my life by feel. What do I feel right? Oh, I feel like fucking Eddie Bravo is on this podcast tomorrow. I, I mean, let's, let's talk to this fool. I didn't even know why I called you. I was like, dude, I have to call him. I'm getting, I'm getting messages from higher vibrations that are... I don't want to put my fucking all this... You know, like I could be, be a jiu-jitsu guy and a fighter and not have to say anything. But I don't believe that that's right. So I believe that whatever is controlling my thoughts is putting me in this direction. And now I have a minute full, full force. No matter where I go, I'm going to put that in. And, and that's it. I believe in the truth, family. This world is in a, in a time right now where it, everybody knows it's in need. And it's like I can't put, like, in my heart, I feel like I, I, I like jiu-jitsu and I like all this, you know, martial arts and all this exposure and all the money and everything that comes with fighting. But 
I feel like there's a bigger thing that we all need to do so that I can like have a higher consciousness so that when I'm not fighting, I have something to work on as I'm growing and I'm connecting with people and on a, on a very, on a higher vibration, really, I'm only about that. And I think that fighting is an intense vibration, but it's not a higher vibration. You know, when you step into that ring, you're, you're going into the animal, animalistic feel. I'm primal. I'm survival. This is, it's not like a higher consciousness where you're like, fuck, I'm going to be like enlightened. Yeah. You know, you don't get enlightened after a fight. You get a fucking scar. And then it's like, how are you going to deal with that? Are you going to trick yourself and tell you like it? You're going to trick yourself and say, oh, I like this. I like this shit. It's like, fuck, you got to be crazy if you like fighting. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, he comes to a very interesting point in one of his books where he says, okay, this is the way the real world is. He said, how is it that we collectivists, we elitists, how can we rule the world when at the same time we want to let the average person think that they're living in a, quote, democracy? And he answers the question brilliantly. He said, it's very simple. You've got to have two major political parties and they'll both have the same major goals, the same basic fundamental principles. And they'll argue with each other uh, on, uh, on the surface with slogans and leadership and style and all of that sort of thing. He said, but we will control them both. There's the strategy. There's the whole scam behind this left-right paradigm. When you understand this history and this reality, you look at it and you say, well, yes, we've got a left wing and a right wing, but they're just opposite wings of the same ugly bird. And we have our cheerleaders, you know, the news commentators and the uh, talk show hosts on the left and on the right. And they frame the debate. They won't let the American people debate the real issues. They won't let them even think about the real issues, which are, are we going to keep American sovereignty or not? Are we going to let the Federal Reserve System, which is a banking cartel, continue to run our government or not? They won't let us talk about those things. And changing from Republican to Democrat or Democrat to Republican is not going to change that. So that's the problem. As long as we depend on the phony wrestlers and depend upon their well-paid cheerleaders in the media to keep us focused on secondary issues, we're never going to get out of this mess. There are certain issues that people on the left and the right in American politics will never discuss. And the reason they won't discuss them is because they agree mutually. The Democrats and the Republicans agree on something, so they don't want to talk about it in public debate because it reveals the fact that they're basically the same. They only talk about things on which they disagree. It turns out that the things on which they agree are the most important things.